Members are loving ABMP 5-Minute Muscles and ABMP Pocket Pathology, two quick reference web apps included with ABMP membership. ABMP 5-Minute Muscles delivers muscle-specific palpation and technique videos, plus origins, insertions, and actions for the 83 muscles most commonly addressed by body workers. ABMP Pocket Pathology, created in conjunction with Ruth Werner, puts key information for nearly 200 common pathologies at your fingertips and provides the knowledge you need to help you make informed treatment decisions. Start learning today. ABMP members log in at abmp.com and look for the links in the Featured Benefits section of your member homepage. Not a member? Learn about these exciting member benefits at abmp.com slash more. Darren Buford. And I'm Kristen Coverly. And welcome to the ABMP Podcast, a podcast where we speak with the massage and body work profession. Our guest today is Bob Haddad. Bob is a recognized Thai therapist, teacher, and author who has studied in Thailand and elsewhere for over 20 years. He offers courses in traditional Thai massage and herbal therapies around the world. His new book, The Art of Thai Massage, A Guide to Advanced Therapeutic Practice, contains information on breath, sensing, intuition, and body mechanics. The book also features descriptions and recipes of Thai herbal therapies that may be integrated into all forms of bodywork. And his feature article, Herbal Bliss, How Thai Medicinal Herbs Can Be an Effective Enhancement in Massage and Bodywork, is the cover story in the March-April 2022 issue of Massage and Bodywork Magazine. Read that article online at massageandbodyworkdigital.com and learn more about Bob's work at thaihealing-arts.com. Hello, Bob. Hello, Kristen. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's nice to meet you and speak with you today. We're so excited to have you with us. And Bob, we have so much to talk to you about today, all things traditional Thai body work. But let's start with your story. We want everyone to know more about you as we begin our conversation. So what brought you to traditional Thai massage? Well, that's an interesting story. Uh, I've had several different careers uh, over the course of my life, and I was at a crossroads. And in my life, after a bunch of changes that left me kind of confused and heartbroken and everything, you know, uh, and uh, I just decided to take some time off and go travel and find myself. Traveling has always been good for me in that way. Whenever I've been confused or not known how to make a decision or which way to act, uh, I, I resort to uh, going somewhere. Uh, I mean, the more uh, unfamiliar the place, generally, the better it is for me. I, I thrive in that kind of an environment where I don't know, I don't speak the language because it forces me to kind of go inward and get in touch with who I am and, um, you know, that kind of thing. So that's what I did. And I went to Asia for the first time. I'd been, traveled quite a bit around the world, but had never been to Asia before. And I was feeling the whole Buddhist kind of pull, you know? And I thought, oh, the temples and the meditation, that might be, you know, conducive to me to help to figure out what to do and how I would get to the next step in my life. I traveled to a different co couple of countries and uh, for short periods of time. And then my main objective was to go to Thailand. And I landed in Thailand in Bangkok did a couple of the tourist things, and then flew to Chiang Mai, the second largest city in the north of Thailand, which is pretty much the seat for cultural activities in Thailand, uh, including Northern Thai healing arts uh, and, uh, and traditional Thai massage. And uh, of course, the first few days poking around in the city and fascinated by the smells and the sights and the sounds, and you know, as one does when one goes to a new country. And uh, within a few days, uh, I started to become be solicited by people on the street, not on the street, but outside their shops. And uh, we're talking, you know, uh, quite a while ago, 20 odd year, 22, 23 years ago, uh, when traditional Thai massage really was not very well known in the West. It was still largely, you know, contained within uh, Southeast Asia. So I decided to go for it. And it was like, you know, how much? $4? for a 90-minute massage? Yeah, sign me up, you know? Uh, so uh, that is the way I began to experience uh, traditional Thai massage. And I continued to receive sessions from different 
massage therapists and shops in different parts of the city. And then I chose one or two that I really liked and went back to them, you know. Uh, and during that process, I thought, well, I don't know what I'm doing in my life. And I'm here. It's an open-ended ticket, you know. Uh, let me take a course. I'll take a beginner's course. And there were there were only two schools at that time that were teaching to Westerners uh, in English. Uh, and so I enrolled in a two-week beginner's course at one of those schools. And the rest, uh, you know, all came together. That's what happened. I, I became really fascinated, attracted to the modality, the techniques, and the way it made me feel. And I thought, well, okay, is this going to be... Is, could this be in my next career, you know? And so after my travels and my journaling and my explorations and my study, uh, I went back to the States and I began to call my friends and said, hey, I want to work, practice this Thai massage stuff on you. And I know you want to give me a free massage? Great, you know? And I set up a, a little mat in a spare room in my home and friends of mine would come over a couple of two or three a week. And I would practice the moves with my little book next to me, <laughs> you know, okay, lift your leg now and do this. And because I hadn't really memorized the sequence. Uh, and, uh, and little by little, I kept doing that. And um, I met a few other teachers that I began to study with in Canada. I studied with someone and in the United States. Uh, someone who uh, had been learning from one of the schools in Thailand as well. I met some other people who were mostly table workers who were also trying to adapt their work to the mat to understand how to work on the floor mat, which it's a whole different set of uh, of uh, skills. I mean, they're interchangeable, but it's, it's quite different than doing table work. And then I returned to Thailand. Later that same year, I was so fascinated, and I went uh, not back to the same school, went to another school uh, and studied for about a month or so, came back and still continued to give out the free massages. I didn't feel I was ready yet. Bob, did, you, anyway, have any, did you have any massage and bodywork training before? Experience? Zero. Wow. Zero. Okay. I, I had done yoga for many, many years, and there are assisted stretches and traditional Thai massage, and there's a parallel to yoga theory and Ayurveda, you know, so there was some sort of a connection. Uh, and I like to think that I'm fairly okay in my body. I have a good sense of movement and, and breath and body mechanics, you know, that kind of thing. So those things are very important as well. But in terms of massage therapy from a Western perspective of bones and fascia and muscles, zero. I couldn't name a muscle if, well, I know two or three, but, you know, not like the <laughs> not like the table workers that I know, you know, who can identify uh, uh, conditions based on which muscle groups, you know, are connecting and all of that stuff. So in, Thai, in traditional Thai medicine and Thai massage, we do, of course, affect the physical body, but it is also considered a holistic healing art in the sense that the whole body is affected, uh, including the energy body. And so... Uh, Disease, you know, with a hyphen, is uh, you know uh, uh, comes about by not only physical manifestations of problems, but also energetic blockages. Uh, and so, the one of the intents in traditional Thai massage, as in Chinese medicine, for example, acupuncture, and as in Ayurvedic medicine, you know, is to find those blockages, quote unquote in the channels or in Chinese, the meridians, in uh, Ayurveda, the nadis, in Thai medicine, we call them sen, is to find those areas that seem either stiff or blocked or where a person is holding tension, you know, not able to relax. You know, if they, you pick up their arm and they keep it erect, well, there's some, you know, reaction there, you know, so you want to loosen that area up and try to understand where is, what is the cause of that particular condition in that very moment? Bob, this and is a so, perfect transition for us to ask the question. Can you share with our listeners a general overview of traditional Thai massage? Yes, I will do my best uh, to do so. Uh, before I do, I want to say that there's a lot of misinformation out there uh, among practitioners, teachers, uh, even in literature and things that you find on on the web, for example, that claim that Thai massage is this uh, very ancient 
uh, type of bodywork that has remained unchanged, you know, for many, many thousands of years, that it was practiced uh, by the doctor, by the Buddha's doctor, that it was invented by this particular Ayurvedic doctor back 2,600 years ago, and that it was transmitted to Thailand, you know, in its purest form. None of these things uh, can be proven to be true. Um, uh, so I do want to let the listeners know to beware that there's a lot of misinformation out there. But to answer your question, uh, traditional Thai massage is a, an amalgam of a combination of uh, elements, including uh, physical movement, compression, awareness of breath uh, in the person that you're working with, as well as your own breath, and focused acupressure, thumbing. A lot of thumbing. You can use elbows and uh, knees in some cases, feet in some cases, but for the most part, palming and thumbing, uh, acupressure along the energy lines, and that's another ball of wax. They're not. They're not really invisible lines that carry invisible energy. You know, they're actually physical structure, which is physical structures, which is also another big misperception. Maybe we can talk about that later. So it's a combination of manipulation, broad and focused pressure, acupressure along specific areas and specific trigger points, for example, and uh, assisted uh, stretching, assisted yoga. So in a way, it's almost sort of like that's how partner yoga kind of came about. A lot of uh, moves in partner yoga come directly from traditional Thai massage. So pressure, uh, acupressure, assisted yoga, it's done on a floor mat, on a comfortable floor mat, not a yoga mat, but, you know, a foam or a cotton mat and not a big thick futon either because that's just too fluffy and not firm enough. And no oils or lotions are generally used uh, throughout a session. A lot of the uh, techniques that are present in table work, uh, like stripping and kneading and that kind of uh, those kinds of things, are generally absent in Thai massage. If one chooses to go into the herbal medicine aspect of the work, uh, herbal balms and poultices. Uh, topical poultices, uh, as well as herbal compresses, uh, which was the feature uh, of the article that we did in this, this month's uh, issue, uh, are wonderful enhancements to a traditional Thai massage. Because when you do find an area that's, for lack of a better word, blocked, and you're really not sure how to manipulate it uh, because there's an awful lot of tension there or there's a tight muscle area or the person is subconsciously holding or there's some body memory going on there from a past trauma, you know, instead of just going in there and working on it right away, you know, get the herbal compress, you know, which has uh, anti-inflammatory, has lots of anti-inflammatory herbs in there. And the heat, of course, just helps to melt away a lot of that tension and work that area with compresses first in varying degrees of heat with varying techniques according to how hot the particular compress is and also according to whether or not you're working on top of clothing or if you're lifting up the shirt or lowering the pants or lifting up the pants leg, uh, et cetera. Thai massage is done uh, wearing light clothing. So, uh, and then once that area is opened uh, a little bit more, or you can feel it, then you can begin to manipulate it to the point where it's a little bit more relaxed and ready to receive uh, more direct treatment. Let's take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors. Anatomy Trains is delighted to invite you to our in-person fascial dissection workshop, May 30th through June 3rd, 2022. We're excited to be back in the lab with Anatomy Trains author Tom Myers and Master Dissector Todd Garcia in Todd's Laboratory of Anatomical Enlightenment in Boulder, Colorado. Join students from around the world and from all types of manual, movement, and fitness professions to explore the real human form, not the images you get from books. Visit anatomytrains.com for details. Now let's get back to the podcast. 
Bob, let's transition and talk more about the main focus of your recent article in Massage and Body Work magazine, which is incorporating herbal medicine and Thai herbal compresses into massage therapy sessions. Can you tell us more about the possible benefits of using these compresses with clients? And then also what kind of techniques can practitioners use with Thai herbal compresses? Sure, absolutely. Um, I have found that the use of, I, I never give a Thai massage session without a compress in my steamer nearby. Uh, even if I don't really use it all that much, when it's needed, it's absolutely wonderful. And I mean, you, you hear and see how the client responds to the heat, the aromas, the aromatherapy component of it, uh, and how it actually does relax muscle groups. But even more than that, how in, in the relaxing of the muscles, breath is enhanced, you know, uh, people go into a parasympathetic state more easily the parasympathetic state when someone can engage in their own self-healing or their own reflection, very often connected to uh, one's feelings, emotional states, spiritual states, that kind of thing. Uh, so uh, I believe very, very much in the Thai uh, herbal compresses. And I'm very fortunate to have studied with uh, two of the, of the greatest matriarchs of the Thai herbal tradition, uh, in Thailand, both of whom are deceased now, but uh, I remember them every time I have a session uh, I'm in my practice. I have a little altar with the photos of my main teachers, which, by the way, for you folks listening in, if you don't have a little space in your practice room, if I may be so bold as to suggest that you put a little something there to remind you of your lineage, um, you're in Thailand, for example, every practice room has to have some sort of uh, a small altar of some sort. And it doesn't have to be religious, but in Thailand, because they're Buddhists, there's always usually a Buddha statue uh, or a Buddha image. There's always uh, a, uh, an image of the doctor, Ayurvedic doctor, Dr. Jivaka, uh, because he's considered the, uh, the uh, father figure of, uh, of uh, traditional Thai medicine, even though he wasn't Thai. He treated the Buddha and uh, as, as a physician, and so they honor him in that way. And then put something of meaning to you, to the practitioner. If, uh, especially in Thailand, we use mementos or images of deceased people that we know, especially family members, mothers, fathers, grandfathers. So, you know, if your grandmother passed away and you loved her very much and you happen to have a small picture of her or a bracelet that she used to wear or something, you can put that on the altar. And then uh, along with uh, traditionally, we'll put a little candle. I light a little votive candle for each client I see. Uh, and uh, I let it extinguish itself or I extinguish it with my dampened fingertips because in Thailand and in many cultures, we use the breath to impart blessings. So if you were to blow out a candle, you know, you're actually dis dispelling all the goodness that you've done. Anyway, these are just little quirky things, but they're part no, of- No, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, I love the sentiment of actually honoring your lineage and it just, what a healthy reminder as you're going into a session or mid-session if you're losing your path. I love that. I love it too. Yeah. And I don't have that in my practice room yet. So I will be doing that starting tomorrow. Thanks, Bob. Bob, one final question uh, with regards to the massage and bodywork article. Can you tell us a little bit about the techniques that practitioners might use? Even non-Thai trained practitioners can use uh, with herbal compresses. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'd be happy to share that information. Uh, there is uh, general information in the article that we did about how to prepare uh, herbal compresses in a very traditional way, but using uh, materials that one can buy in the West. Uh, there are herbal distributors that you can buy by the pound, by the kilo, uh, and mix your own blends. And there's also a general recipe in that uh, article, but there's a lot more information in other sources, including in my book and also on the Thai Healing Alliance website. For those of you that are interested, uh, please get in touch with the thaihealingalliance.com uh, or with the magazine and if you want to get in touch with me, I'm happy to help anybody uh, that might be interested in that. Um, the general blend that I use, um, 
for my compresses is a traditional one based on uh, equal parts of lemongrass, dried lemongrass, and dried eucalyptus, and then uh, one part each of uh, dried ginger pieces, dried ginger powder, and then smaller portions of peppermint and rock salt and a, uh, a tuber called galanga. Galanga is a Thai uh, tuber, uh, very well, Asian tuber, and in Australia it's available too. Uh, very similar. It's in the ginger family, but it has a slightly different taste, it has similar properties to ginger. So uh, you will um, add a to, to these dry ingredients, you add crushed ginger. So for every time I make a compress, I'm, I have my little... Uh, you know, uh, te meat tenderizer, you know, I don't use it for meat, but I use it to crush my ginger. And you pull apart the strands and so the ginger is stringy. And you mix this fresh, juicy kind of ginger root with the dry stuff and then put it in a, uh, a little muslin bag or in a, uh, a shop cloth, wrap it up. There are, in, uh, there are directions uh, in, the, uh, in the article as well as uh, on, online. Uh, and so I use these uh, compresses to great uh, extent uh, with my clients when, as we were speaking about earlier, you find a large mass of tightness or a blockage in a person's body, wherever it may be, in their legs or in their shoulders or in their abdomen. Uh, and you want to soften and open with heat and the medicinal properties of the herbs that area first before you physically manipulate it with your hands. Um, and uh, there are many different techniques that can be used uh, according to what you're trying to do to coax open the area. If it's against bone structure like the back or the spine or the upper chest, uh, very commonly we can use an extremely hot compress and rapidly tap the area, tapotmant, where you just you know tap the area that helps to stimulate and to open the area. It also helps to free the breath. If you're noticing that the client has beleaguered breath or is, you know, having a hard time taking full and deep breaths, that also can can be uh, can be very helpful. Uh, we can use long term compression of compresses against uh, a muscle group. Uh, and but then you have to be careful to make sure that it's not too hot because if you're holding that compress there for you know 10 seconds or eight seconds or so, make sure you test it on yourself first. So, whenever I go to the steamer, I open the top of the steamer, grab my rag so my hand doesn't get too hot, pick up the compress. If I'm working on bare skin, like on their legs or their thighs or their back. And then before I apply it to someone, I test on myself. If I'm working on top of clothing on the leg, I touch it to my leg first to gauge how long I can stay because you definitely don't want to uh, just be oblivious because then you can wind up sort of burning the person. Uh, so we use uh, the different types of techniques uh, according to what we're trying to do to release uh, or to open uh, a particular area in the human body. Uh, and in accordance with how hot the particular compress is. So at various times during a session, I will either lower or raise the temperature of the steamer because I want to affect a different part of the body in a different way. And a good classic example of this is when you engage in steam inhalation. Very often for people that manifest with asthma or bronchitis or, you know, they have you know, TMJ, and it's something that's very uh, focused in the face or the neck or the head, uh, I will raise the temperature in the steamer a few minutes before I know that I'm going to want to be working to do some uh, aromatherapy inhalation. And so by the time I am positioned in order to work with that person at the neck or the head or the face, that's the steamer is, is you know, that, that compress is smoking, you know, and by the time I take it out, it's billowing with vapor, which I then put the compress on the floor because it's even too hot for me to hold. And as the steam comes out from it, I turn the person's head so their nose and mouth is very, very close within an inch or two of the face of that compress. And just as they're breathing it in, because they always go for deep and beautiful breaths, because it smells fantastic, you know, and it really helps to open up 
uh, congestion and bring about deep relaxation. So while that person has their head inclined in one direction, I might be working on the opposite shoulder or working on the opposite side of their neck very gently. But really, all I'm doing is buying time because I don't want to let go of them. I want to keep my, my connection to them while they're breathing in the vapors. And then I will take that compress, bring it to the other side of their head, and then slant their head in that same direction so they can breathe in through the other nostril as well. Bob, this has been a fantastic podcast. And readers, I just want to make sure that you go to Massage and Body Work Digital or access your print magazine and read Bob's article, which he goes into much more depth about herbal compresses. And as Bob mentioned as well, for readers to either contact Bob or to visit ThaiHealingAlliance.com to find out more information. Thank you so much for joining us today, Bob. This has been incredibly enlightening and just a fun, great conversation. Thank you. It's been fun for me too. And thanks to, to Massage and Body Work Magazine for doing such a great job over the years. Kapkun Ka, Bob. Such great Kapkun information. Ka. We appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>